hey everybody, welcome back to Wrestling Travels Lockdown Sessions, brought to you, as always, by our good friends over in New York City, True Heel Heat Wrestling. Those guys are killing it with podcasts, and I think they got newsletters now, and I think they even send you telegrams and everything, SP3 working it over there. So True Heel Heat, and bringing us, we're really excited about this one, Shaw Guerrero, thank you for joining us. I, don't, I know I pronounce that so Midwest, don't I? I don't put the, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Not everybody rolls the R's, and sometimes I don't if I'm feeling lazy. What's <laughs> so. the perfect pronunciation, though? Guerrero, baby. Okay. I would <laughs> never get that. Guerrero, hey. no. <laughs> I don't get it half the time. It's fine. <laughs> okay, good. I was like, man, everything we talked about before recording, and I'm like, I didn't go. You know why? Because I knew I wouldn't be able to roll the R's. But, hey, it's thank okay. you so I got much. You. Thanks for joining us. We uh, really appreciate it. Wrestling Travel, um, you know, always excited to have uh, big guests on. And you are someone that we have uh, wanted to have on for a while. We just haven't uh, reached out yet. So finally, unfortunately, 2020 is the year that we could make the connection because things are they're kind of flowing and ebbing, as they say. So Yeah, 2020 has been kind of a dumpster fire uh, for more than one reason, obviously. But no, I am, I feel really blessed. We were kind of touching on this before we got uh, rolling, uh, but like just how much more, I hope, accessible stars are and wrestlers and celebrities are to their fans because we're all virtual now. So like, um, that's actually really wonderful to thank you guys for giving me an opportunity to connect with everybody more and to get to talk with you guys. I'm, I'm flattered you guys asked. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And we, so we're mainly out of the UK, so we get a lot of UK viewers, which will be cool. That's why I try to sell it to everybody too. I'm like, we're at least we're worldwide. We're the States and the UK, but what, you know what? I usually ask all kinds of crazy questions in the beginning, not crazy, but um, just yeah. kind of set up questions, but <laughs> While we're on the subject of 2020, I usually kind of build up to this, hence the lockdown name. What in the world? Um, I know you you did the, the some announcing on AEW, but generally since the pandemic, which we're calling it March, what have you been doing What um, to, to keep from going crazy like the rest of us? Oh God. Um, I honestly, it's probably going to sound like a lot, but it's like, I feel like my attention span is very short. Like I've always told my husband that I am never going to be a person that can do the same job 10 years in a row. Like, I'm just not like that. I'm naturally nomadic. And so in quarantine, when we're shut down and I have to be in the house all the time. Yeah. I got a little sporadic. Um, I'm obsessed with animal crossing, um, which has been a big source of joy for me. Um, I have to work out. I hate working out actually, but it's been really good for my mental health uh, to make sure I'm keeping, you know, just active and whatnot. Uh, I I am a professional dancer normally. And so um, I have been doing that every now and again, but it was kind of crazy. I feel like I'm not alone with saying like a lot of artists and I don't know about, well, obviously wrestling because it's a contact sport, but like I think when everything shut down, everything stopped, all the gigs were canceled, I think I kind of shut down a little bit and I didn't want to create anything for a while. So um, honestly, I was just kind of like exploring like a lot of meditation and just being kind to myself and letting myself breathe and try and slow down, which is hard. But other than that, a lot of video games, me and my husband have a Twitch channel uh, that we have a lot of fun on. Uh, I started a Twitch channel and um yeah i don't know there's like so much i could tell you that i've done but like yeah i kind of like bounce around and do all kinds of different things so that's what keeps me sane well let, let's do this i'm going to get real serious for a second just because of you know it's it's november 2nd we've got an election tomorrow we've been locked down i know our friends in the united kingdom are just going to go into another lockdown yeah but for for those that are watching this you know, that are going to listen to somebody like you more than, than me or some, what are, for those that are kind of struggling mentally and struggling with everything, what were some of the things, like you said, meditation and some, what were some of the best things that you kind of found to help yourself that maybe somebody else can go, Hey, I'll try that. Absolutely. Um, so for me, like my self care might not sound like self care to somebody else. So like there are things I have to force myself to do that I don't want to do such as working out 
drink your water. Are you eating three times a day? Like, and what are you eating? Cause I think I'm not alone with like, <laughs> with everyone DoorDash and like all like the food delivery systems. Like we got bad for a while. We got bad. Um, but like, yeah, making sure you're taking care of yourself as best as you can. Um, in addition to that, uh, I love guided meditation. Um, I think we've all had a lot of anxiety and mine tends to like manifest at night. I can't sleep. I get insomnia. So night meditations, actually it's called tracks to relax. That's my favorite night meditation. So if you guys want to check it out, they're awesome. Uh, they're on Patreon. So that's cool. And then other than that, sometimes my self-care is going on Animal Crossing for an hour or going on TikTok for an hour because I need to laugh and I need to like just get out of my mind. I think if we're in our head too much, that's an, at least for me, I start to spiral and overthink everything. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I joined TikTok just so I could follow wrestling travel because they joined TikTok. Yes. And I just have wrestling clips from shows that I covered and I just... The, the fun thing for me was just setting up some cool music. My TikTok yeah. tip of the day that I always give everybody is get the 15 or 30 second clip of It's Tricky by Run DMC and any yeah. wrestling clip, what's like a high spot, it looks like you set it up like professionally. I've got <laughs> one with, I think like the Young Bucks or something up there. Yes. Just, they're flying around and it looks like I set it up perfectly. But, you know I get on TikTok. I was on TikTok the other night, and it was creeping me out. There's uh, guys that saying they're time travelers and all kinds of stuff on my For You page. It was weird. Whoa, all of it. Because, like, I mean, the For You page definitely, like, tries to cater to you. So, like, all of a sudden, a bunch of time travelers on your For You page. Like, did you weird. look up something? <laughs> like, on Wait. Google <laughs> or something? I have no idea. I mean, I'll, you know what the thing is? is I'll, I think what happens is I get one, and I go click on the guy's page and go, what else is this guy? What right. What other kind of things? Maybe that's why. Uh, right. And that might explain all the twerking videos that are on there too. I don't know. But. Hey, if you want to learn how to twerk, all you had to do was ask, man. I could help you out. <laughs> Wrestling Travel presents the instructional twerking video starring myself with you. I don't, there we oh, go. Yeah. It's about to go down. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, TikTok, um, very entertaining. I mean, I, I couldn't believe when people talked about it. I'm old. So I'm like, well, I'll join it for this. But then I was like, it's so entertaining. It's so entertaining. I Mainly on my For You page, it's a lot of cats uh, doing silly things. A lot of uh, huskies, you know, like all the, there's a lot yeah. of husky videos out there. And uh, and then, other than that, but like, I don't create content. I, I'm just on there for everybody else, <laughs> which is probably creepy. I'm just a voyeur on TikTok. I just watch everybody do their thing. I got an email <laughs> like two weeks ago to become a creator because I, I've got, what? get this, it's like, I've got 18.8 thousand followers. Like how many of them are robots or whatever? I don't know, but I shouldn't because not once has like, I recorded anything except from stuff I had already taped that matches when, when I'm covering and I'm like, well, I'll just put this to music. So they sent me a thing, how to be a creator. And I don't know. I've got one TikTok that's got 1.1 million views on it, which is that's insane. It's insane, but I don't know. It, it, like, it doesn't do anything for me. I'm like, well, what do I do with it? I have no idea. I need, <laughs> like, I I need like, a manager or something, but I'm like, <laughs> I want to switch it. But. No, I get you, though. Like, I feel like that with, like, social media, like, especially when, like, you're getting up in the followers, like, like I need someone to manage all this because it's, like, you don't get a time to yourself sometimes because you're, like, constantly, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're on TikTok, you're doing all these things, you're keeping up with promoters, you're doing all this, and I'm just like, holy crap what I would love to do not that I don't love to be connected with my fans all the time but like it's a lot sometimes I had to put the phone down for a while ah self-care other self -care. yeah no, I can't even imagine you like I'm my Twitter has like 1200 people following me if I could get half of them from TikTok to because I'm like TikTok I just I used I was doing a video every day just to try to be supportive of, of wrestling travel right and then all of a sudden you just hit the right wrestling combination with the right set of music and it took off. So Yeah. Have you noticed too? I don't know how much you get on there, but obviously Fleetwood Mac dreams that that girl covered it. She did an amazing job. Oh really? Oh I haven't. You have, oh my goodness. I haven't seen it. So this girl, I don't know how old she is girl, woman, whatever. She covers dreams by Fleetwood oh. Mac. And this is a couple weeks old. Um 
Laney. Who is Laney is the name of it. And she, oh, I'm sure we'll have. I got to co- check it out because I love Fleetwood Mac. So I oh. need to go check out the cover. She kills it. She kills it. Laney Ooh. Gardner. I'll try to send it to you afterwards. Well, you don't have to tell me twice to get on TikTok. Oh, <laughs> I'm probably on there too much. <laughs> um, but now Dreams was number one on iTunes. Um, I see all kinds oh, of stuff good. now. There's just different. It's really affecting our pop culture. I've noticed TikTok because I oh, do what I never said I do. I'll go on TikTok for five minutes and it's, I've got an hour gone just laughing and looking at Absolutely. obviously the, the crazy people with the time travelers are on there too. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun You tell thing. yourself, okay, you get five swipes. Yeah. You get five swipes and five turned into 30 swipes and you're just like, oh my God. But you're absolutely right. Like the songs, like people create songs and like they end up blowing up. And I feel bad for some of the people that create this amazing music because then they didn't know, like, I should be getting paid or I should be having like this, uh, what do you call it, credited. And so like, yeah, it's insane. Some kid in New Zealand came up with a beat and then it became Savage Love by Jason Derulo. And then the kid had a beef with them and now they collaborated. So now I think everybody's happy and making some money. But yeah, it's it's insane. And I'm sure it would have maybe happened in any other year. But I'm, my whole point getting back to it was 2020 is a crazy year because a lot of us are stuck at home. You normally would be out working and out on the road more and probably not have a whole lot of time um, to be as creative on a phone or just paying attention to stuff. Like just the fact that you hadn't heard the the Fleetwood Mac cover tells me, yeah, you've been you've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing because I couldn't get away from it. So I have. <laughs> that's how I kind of feel about Animal Crossing. But uh no, I've I've I have enjoyed the break. Um I, I think I just I miss people, I miss my friends and I miss like I did notice, I think like this this is kind of where like I got a little deep during quarantine where I'm like, I attach so much of my self-worth to what I do as a job. And I, and like when everything stopped for everybody, I was like, oh, okay, we need to reel it back and we need to like rediscover who we are as a person and love how you treat people and like who you are as a person, not with what you do. So I think I'm really excited like to, um, I also started training during quarantine, like started getting back in the ring and whatnot. And so I think I'm going to be coming back into wrestling so much healthier as well as back into dance and stuff, just a lot healthier and in a better mindset, hopefully stronger for sure. Like I'm sure many of us will be stronger because of this year. Yeah. And we're, we're coming back with when we hopefully get back and we have fans and mm-hmm. we can get in. I mean, everything will just be adrenaline. Out. Let me, let me talk about your training. So my journalistic integrity includes a lot of Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> but growing up in the family that you've grown up in, um, from a young age, did you, were you like, hey, I want to kind of do this? Or were you the opposite going, I don't, I'm going to do my own thing? Uh, how did wrestling come about, actually? Because I imagine it's, I imagine you've answered it a hundred times, but. I no, that's fine. I, I I still try and wrap my head around it. I feel bad. I feel like I disappoint people <laughs> with my answer. Just because, like, I guess, you know, like, any kid growing up, like, their parents' job is their parents' job. And even though my dad's job happened to be way cooler than maybe, like, I don't know. Um, it was really cool and I loved going backstage with them and stuff like that I never I think um it's also a little bit of a hard question because when I was younger and growing up it was a hard house to live in because obviously it's no secret my dad had drug and alcohol addiction my mom was trying to keep it together they were dealing with divorce and dealing with like there was a lot going on in the house so I think like I escaped a lot through music and dance, uh, and that was where, and that's where I'm still extremely passionate. I'm still extremely passionate about all of that. Um, but it wasn't until I was older, like when I was like 19, it was after my dad passed away, and my I was starting to travel with my mom and uh, to her loops and stuff that John Laurinaitis took notice of me and I never thought I was beautiful enough or strong enough or um what WWE was looking for at the time um and apparently I had potential to them and I just I happened to do their tryout um I said yes to doing a tryout and 
voila, there I go wrestling. So that's how it kind of happened. I can't hear you. I think you're muted. I was muted. Yay. Oh, not oh. yay for you being muted, but yay for back. <laughs> yeah, for everybody. <laughs> You know what? I had the cough, so I hit the mute button, and I left the arrow there, so I must have tapped it again. <laughs> My apologies. Professional show here. Um, <laughs> no, I was saying you you get to try. So you're with FCW prior to it being NXT, right? Yeah. And, and then you're you're part of uh, with our good friend Big Con. You're in the yes. uh, you're part of the Ascension with him for a little bit. So I love the Ascension. We had so much fun creating that with Dusty Rhodes, like. Oh, we really, really enjoyed it. Like we had a good thing going for a while too. Like we were just like, I don't know. It was really a cool product of what Dusty wanted to create. And I feel really privileged to have learned from all those guys. So I feel very blessed. Just being down there with Dusty Rhodes has got to be amazing. And just talking to like some of the guys that I have been lucky enough to have on the show that were in that same era with you, it sounded like it was a whole lot of, uh, energy excitement and you guys were like hey, let's find ourselves there it sounds it sounds like a good movie is what it sounds like to me you know? oh my god like every pro every wednesday at like i think in the morning was promo day and it was a freaking movie baby like and dusty like i loved hearing him talk um once you earned like a certain like once dusty knew you could do a promo and you could throw down with a promo um, he was really wonderful about like just letting you go. Like I think I like humbly I say this, I earned that with him. And so eventually I could just come in and do whatever promo I wanted, whether it was character related or not. And it, it was like a really wonderful acting class. I feel so, so, so privileged that I got to work with Dusty. He was one of the people that really made me feel like I had potential in this business and that I was a star and that I could do it. So forever I will be thankful to Dusty. May he rest in peace. Hearing that from anybody is pretty cool, but hearing that from Dusty Rhodes, that's a little extra special. Yeah, he yeah, blew but, my mind yeah. on a regular basis. <laughs> and I guess that's why I want to hear those stories about FCW and with Dusty Rhodes. It just seems, even though it wasn't that long ago, it just seems like in the wrestling world, you know, a lot has changed with the way the, the writing and the stuff is done. That, that seemed like... So much outlaw days like the wild wild west where hey we, if you can do it let's do it and now we're you know from what i hear i'm not going to pretend like i'm in the wwe but from what you hear it's a little a little more hardcore with the yeah. writing and everything so. no there's so much that's changed and i think that's like something i'm trying to deal with right now i'm about to have my debut um for generation championship wrestling in tampa florida on november 13th and I'm so nervous because, like, from when I started at FCW, women did not get long matches. Like, we got 10 minutes total with entrances figured out. And, like, that's not a lot of time. And, like, now the women are going, like, like 20, 30, like, more. Like, and they're having, like, these hardcore matches. And it's, like, amazing. I'm so happy of, like, everyone's work to just elevate the women's division which is amazing but i'm like whoo it's a whole new world now like i have like and i need to i'm really excited to learn from people in the independent circuit and get better and get to the level of all these other amazing women so i'm really excited to start my journey with wrestling like all over again it's like a renaissance but it's very different than fcw days for sure we were going to get there. The, the Diamond Cup, I believe it is, that is happening in Tampa. But I, one of the first women guests that we ever had on, I ever had on the show, were Lucy and Kelly, the Blossom Twins out of Manchester, England. And I would talk to them, and I want to talk to you about it. Back in the day, you know, the Attitude Era, it was the bra and panties match. And I got so... Um, you know, even as a male fan, once it was, it was TNA and Impact, they started it. I would switch over on uh, Wednesday nights. And I'm like, dude, their women are killing it better than, I dare say it, the men. Because they had awesome matches, great storylines. And they weren't, um, and I don't want to sound like some, like I'm standing on a soapbox. But they weren't treated as like an object or a sideshow of what traditional professional wrestling was 
when we had the little people we had the, mm-hmm. but I, I i credit and it was probably somebody else before that but impact in the mid 2000s i was like they are starting to kill it with the women wrestling women's wrestling so tell me it's gotta and i can tell just from you saying what you said before and me saying this it's got to be so much better now to watch um these girls like sasha and bailey hell in yeah. a cell a week ago or whatever killing it but women are tearing it up and providing great becky lynch mm-hmm. um even um on the independent scene you know I've, I've seen many uh tessa blanchard kylie ray madison rain just name after name that are if you just think back maybe 10 years ago we um you asked an average wrestling fan and they could maybe name a couple women wrestlers so this has got to be awesome for you it's amazing. I love women's wrestling so much more. Not not that I didn't before, because when I was a kid watching wrestling, I watched my dad and I watched the divas. Like that was that was what I was in. That was what I was into. And I love watching women's wrestling. But I think like kind of going back to like what I was saying before of like I never thought I could do this. It was kind of what I was seeing was bra and panty matches, and I'm like, do I want to do this? Like, I don't look like that. And like, even if I could do that, like, I don't, I don't look like those girls. And so like, yeah, I think that those kind of matches maybe put me off like subconsciously before I knew. Um, But no, now it's just like, "Ah, it's a whole new world. There's so many amazing women to look up to. There's so many people I want to wrestle because they're just, there's so many just grade A badasses out there. And I'm just so excited. Um, But you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, I, I'm not a fan of the bra and panty era. Um, not to say like, like I don't respect those women. I've I've said this like from day one. Any woman that stepped in that ring has done something for this business because we had to fight to get there in the first place. And you know we we weren't getting paid as much as the men. We weren't getting re- the same time, the same respect. And so any woman that's done this, like thank you. That way I can do it now. So, but yeah, I, I'm with you. <laughs> I wasn't a fan of that. Yeah, and, and, and you, you said it, well, I don't want to come off like, you know, oh, shame on them for doing it. You're right. They did what they, but I imagine 99% of them, if they could have traded places with somebody today and had a badass wrestling match versus a pillow fight. Hell yeah. A badass wrestling match, you know? Yeah. And like, even then, like, look, like thinking back on those FCW, like, uh, days, Sometimes we didn't get to wrestle. Like, like you would have one women's match that was very short, and the rest of us had to do a bikini contest or a dance contest. And I'm like, really? Like, that's what we're doing? Like, at least let me be in the back and, like, at least study. Like, at least, like, watch the matches and learn. But, like, yeah, it was a lot of bikini contests, a lot of uh, dance contests, and just kind of, I'm like, thank God that's done. Yep. Thank God that's done. But, like... It was just a different time that I was there. And it's crazy because it feels like a whole other world. Like, it feels like a, another life that I did that in. And it's like, nope, it's actually was not that long ago. It was only six yeah, years it's, ago. Like I said at the beginning of the question, I'm like, it seems like forever ago, but it wasn't. And that's got to be um, for the young girls today watching the product. It's got to be a whole different world versus, uh, you know, when you were younger watching the product and the, had a different, just the role model. Mm-hmm. Um, just of the women and then therefore for you guys you take on a bigger um i imagine just from talking to you from the brief time that's a big deal to you being you know have, for a young girl watching your matches to be able to look up and you you not presenting yourself as anything but a badass wrestler yeah i'm like especially looking back on raquel diaz and honestly like i'm not gonna knock raquel diaz because like I think I, it was wonderful because I got to explore um, just character work and I got to work with Dusty on it and I got to see a side of myself, but Raquel Diaz is going to be nowhere near what I'm going to present now because I think I relied so heavily on character um, that I did not uh, excel my wrestling. And also I was dealing with an eating disorder at the time, a pretty severe one. And um, that wasn't helping me be an athlete, that the athlete that I wanted to be. So now I'm just really excited because I have like a really healthy mind now. Not to say I don't still have my mental health days. I do. (laughs) Um, But like, I'm a lot better now. I'm healthier. um, And I 
can't wait to just be the badass that I've always wanted to be, but I was always scared that I couldn't measure up to. So we'll see what happens. I'm excited. So that's coming up. Well, I want to talk about it here because I could go off on a tangent. I don't want to. That's (laughs) November 13th in Tampa. And you've got Renee Michelle, I believe. Oh, yeah. So so that's your first match. Now, is this – maybe you don't even know. Are there fans or limited fans or – uh, as they, far as I know, yes, there's fans. I um, I am truly hoping that everybody social distances and whatnot. It's in Florida, and Florida is kind of like no judgy, but it's kind of like a free for all. Right. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I don't know. It's different than Chicago for sure, and Wisconsin. I'm yeah. uh, I'm very sure. Um, so, but I know I'm gonna wear a mask. I'm gonna make sure I'm super safe, and like I make sure like. Um, even though Renee's my opponent, uh, I'm going to make sure I don't go around like smacking a bunch of hands and then like wrestling Renee. I'm going to make sure we try and keep each other as safe as possible, uh, as we're kicking the crap out of each other. So that'll be fun. But yeah, I think there are fans as far as I know. That's it. I'm sure they'll be taking all the precautions. I know I was down in Chicago for Warrior Wrestling, did three shows in September, uh, did them very well, very socially distanced, wiping the ring down and everything. And I think they kind of put out a little bit of a blueprint for as far as we know how to be safe everything always changes I always one of the things that affects my mental health is watching the news because I can it'll tell me one thing that one channel tell me the sky is falling the other one will tell me hey Miami Dolphins can have 65,000 fans so it's so so crazy isn't it yeah, I'm with you. I'm re- I really am. Like I uh we don't have cable my husband and I and I've never been more thankful for that. But um you know, the news is everywhere now, you know. It's on TikTok, it's on, you know, Google, it's on everywhere. And so it's like I have like a credible source. I have like I me personally, I'm not putting this down anyone's throat or anything. I like I have NPR and like I have like one or two news publications that I really trust that's very credible. And I'm like, that's all I look at right now. Because if, if I look at all the things, it's just, it's too much. It's so much. And it's like anxiety. I, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> one channel is telling you one thing, the other channel is telling you the other. Like, what but, do you do? Yeah, I just shut it off. And then, of course, I've got everybody on yeah. Facebook. Is You know, a lot of people are using Facebook for <sighs> just know. the normal thing. But some of them are going over the top with the political thing. And I'm like, listen. Yeah. Just, I don't care. There's been presidents that I didn't care for. There's been presidents I like, but you couldn't tell either way because it just, it is what it is. And I don't I, know, I just I, think it's crazy. No, I actively stay away from Facebook. I feel bad because I have friends or sometimes promoters are like, oh, I reach out to you on Facebook. I'm like, there are so many platforms. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm actively avoid Facebook, but. Um, for, for any promoters out there that would like to book me or anybody that would like to contact me, I have a booking email. Use it. Yes, please. Is that <laughs> like booking, book- is that on your Twitter as well? It's on my Twitter. It's on my Instagram. It's on, it's on pretty much everything. Super easy. Booking.shawguerrero at gmail.com. Yeah, we'll plug that at the end too, but I just want to remind fans that a booking email is just that. It is a booking email for wrestlers. So try yes. not to. You don't need to email them there because they're, they're not going to answer you anyway. I love you all. I want to talk to you, but we could do it like in, in the comments or, yeah, or something. Absolutely. Not, not at the booking email. <laughs> not the, yeah, because the booking email, we get excited when it comes in and then we're like, oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it. But um, so Renee Michelle, talk to me about her for a little bit. I want to push this. This is going to be a big match. What are we looking for? Well, first of all, like when I was told I was going to be wrestling her, I got super excited because they are extremely talented. Uh, They're a wonderful athlete. Obviously, they've held multiple championships. And so I'm like, I'm going to learn a lot from Renee. Uh, And I did cut a promo on Renee, you know, just letting her know what it is. It is what it is. Guerrero's just do it better. I'm going to get the win, but I respect you. And I have no doubt Renee is going to kick my ass in the ring and she's going to remind me, yeah, I haven't wrestled in six years. Like it will be like, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel it, but I have a lot to prove and I can't wait to, to prove that not only to her, but to everybody and to take home the GCW women's championship. But, uh, and she, uh, she cut a promo on me too. You know, she did the typical, you're riding your father's coattails, you're riding your mother's coattails, you know, and, and 
I haven't, I've heard that before, sweetheart. Uh, <laughs> but you know, um, that's fine. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad she said it. I'm really glad she said it because when I win, then honestly, that, that argument is moot. So uh, I am really looking forward to learning from her. I, I'm really excited and, you know, may the best woman men win. Absolutely. So speaking of the Guerrero family, I'm going to tell you a little story. So I'm a huge AWA guy because I'm old. <laughs> Used to watch AWA every Saturday night. And one day, one of my favorite wrestlers is in a tag team match. And his name is Ricky Rice. Okay. And I think they're fighting the Nasty Boys. So I'm like, ooh, this is kind of good because um, usually we just have a guy that's a really big name and then Joe Schmo and they just beat him up. That's all it ever was. Right. Well, they bring in the Ricky Rice's tag team partner. They introduce him and I've never heard of him. So I know he's going to take the pinfall. And I'm like, oh, this guy, this Mondo Guerrero guy, he's just going to be so terrible and so boring. And that guy... Ricky took the pin, I think. Mondo was all over the place. I was so impressed. And that would, that led me to kind of looking up uh, more of the Guerrero style. So I got to tell you, and Mondo was in <laughs> AWA. And eventually, you know, uh, Chavo Sr. and Hector came in. And I, I got to tell you, from there, I was always, you know, looking for more. In fact, uh, I found out that Hector was Lasertron in the end of when I was a kid, you know. Finding uh -huh. st stuff out like this was just so cool but i i can remember that to this day picture perfect that ricky rice comes out and i'm like oh this mondo guerrero guy he's gonna he's gonna lose the match for us and oh, was, no. he was all over the place i was so impressed so <laughs> i guess you know how do you, do you keep do you keep track with the uncles and everything so uh i will say though i i think it's really funny that of all the brothers uh you got mondo and you had that that like pre like that thought and i understand that thought of like oh i already know who's gonna take the pin but like mondo is the most animated one out of all the brothers and the most entertaining one out of all the brothers when you get everybody in the room like the guerreros we're crazy man like i don't know like big personalities and uh with the exception of my dad i think my dad was very shy i'm very shy actually um unless i have a little camera on me that's it's different but like uh we we like to hang back and observe more than anything but yeah they're pretty colorful so i love that you have that story about mondo um but i i i don't like that that's when we're like i don't want to get in the weeds of anything but i think when my dad passed like you know it's hard when someone passes, especially so suddenly. And, um, you know, dad didn't have anything. He was 36. He was 36 when he passed. He didn't have a will. Like he didn't like, you know, nothing was set in stone. And I think family was trying to help, but then my mom was just trying to deal with things and she was trying to do the best for us. And so I think like we, we haven't had a lot of contact with the Guerrero family. I've kind of had contact on and off. Um, but uh you know what like i wish everybody well i wish everybody health and um i will always have love for the guerreros and um i wish we were closer but like uh you know what like they're they're still my family they always will be and uh i appreciate every everything they've done because they busted their asses so much because my dad busted his ass the way he did and my mom I've been able to have doors open to me and I'm well aware that I have had privilege in that regard, but I'm really looking forward to proving that I belong where these doors are opening. So, um, I will forever be thankful for. Um, talk to me about like, I'm, I'm going to be respectful of your time here, but what, who are some of the names of women, uh, or it could be even be men, but before it's all said and done that you'd like to maybe step in the ring with. Ah, I've always Sorry. said this. <laughs> no, I just I love this question, but it's always like it's like, what's your favorite band? It's like, oh, I can't just yeah, because it. you're gonna leave somebody out. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna leave somebody out, or like, or when someone asks your favorite song, and all of a sudden you can't remember any song that you've heard ever. Um, but no, I God, there's I've always um I've known Jessica Havoc for a really long time, and I would love for her to throw me around the ring. Oh, I would love to ragdoll for her so hard. Um, but I um, obviously we heard the news about Kylie Ray today, but she was definitely on my top five people I really wanted to get in the ring with. Um, 
but like I'm so excited for her to find health and happiness and she's gonna shine no matter what she does I'm really excited for her to start a new chapter in her life um but oh my god who else who else I mean um Alexa Bliss has been a longtime friend and I would love to wrestle her again um oh my god who who Cool. Um, Nyla Rose, obviously, I would love to go head to head and see how my mom would handle that, uh, and um, or be a part of their stable. I would absolutely love that. Oh, oh God, it's so it's so hard. I'm like I'm trying to think of everybody right now, um, but I, I'll get to everybody eventually. Oh, Tessa Blanchard. I was going to ask about Tessa. Yeah, I uh, I remember. So I am the ring announcer for Wow Women of Wrestling, and obviously Tessa is one of the biggest stars there. Um, this is probably going to sound super cheesy and corny, uh, but, like, I was watching them wrestle, and I got to, we tape multiple shows in a night, and I, I had the privilege of watching Tessa wrestle, like, more than one time, and I would get, I get emotional when I watch her. She, she puts it all out there, every little movement, every, every facial, every, oh, oh my god, I love Tessa, I'm such a, I'm, I mark out for her, honestly, and I would love to learn from her, so definitely she's one of the top five, definitely. You know, every time I've come across her, she has been nothing but super nice, yeah, and I've great. heard so many other people say, oh, she's kind of a, a pain in the butt, and, and I'd heard that about Ric Flair as well. But I'm going, you know what? The time I came across Ric Flair, we were at the same show at the same time. I just said hello. I didn't go interrupt him while he was eating dinner or something. Mm -hmm. So I imagine you get different outcomes. But, yeah, she was one that I was actually – I'd heard so many, like, ah, she's kind of mean. And I'm like, well, when I was saying hi to her, I was like, hey. And I'm like, well, she could have been more of a sweetheart. So – no, I, like – I never want to invalidate anybody's experience because I don't know, like – I can't make a judgment on anybody. I can only judge my experience with a person that I've had. And like me and Tessa have always been cool. And so like, I've always appreciated their help and uh, they've been there for me for advice. Cause like, especially embarking on the new world of independent wrestling, um, it's daunting, especially, of course I decided to get back into wrestling in 2020. Great shawl. But um, no, I, I feel very lucky to have some good friends in wrestling already. Um, Holiday is another um, one. Oh, yeah, she's cool. Oh, way cool. Uh, and Thunder Rosa is another good friend of mine that is helping me. Um, actually, Thunder Rosa and Holiday, if you want to hear a funny story, they love uh, to screw with me in the ring. And wow, if you have not seen wow, uh, you can actually see me breaking character multiple times. Uh, because they like to mess with me every time I'm announcing them. They crawl up my leg. Thunder Rosa has licked me before. Uh, like, Ho Holly has, uh, yeah, screwed with me multiple times, and I love them for it. It's the best job. <laughs> How about, would we add Jordan Grace on that list of somebody to get in the ring with? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, the list is so long, honestly, and I think it's more of, like, me – um like trying to like remember things while i'm on right now but like uh there there's a lot of really great women um at impact wrestling as well taya valkyrie oh, yeah. would love to wrestle taya um Ch chelsea green love to wrestle her um I, i'm a huge rhea ripley fan um shotzi blackheart like oh there's so many people i i feel so blessed that women's wrestling is what it is today i just had steve tortorello on from warrior wrestling he's a good friend Love talking to him about the promotion he built up. Warrior Wrestling is in Chicago. Yes, it is. You are in Chicago. I am. <laughs> if Ky if Kylie has decided not to be around wrestling anymore, there's a there's a vacant title there. I mean, there is. And we're talking maybe in the spring. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna put words in anybody's ears, but I'm just saying, I, I wouldn't mind. Like Oh, no, I, I have my eye on Warrior Wrestling. Um, I, I'm also debuting for Zello Pro. That is also in Chicago. Uh, I, I really can't wait. Um, I feel just blessed that people are giving me an opportunity right now to, you know, get my chops back. And I fully intend on any promotion that I can get into, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn. And whether I get my ass beat or if I come out on top, I'm going to keep learning, keep growing and, you know, make them towns, baby. Make them towns. That's the, the cool thing we talked about on Warrior Wrestling. And I know that you know this, but just for people watching this, even if you go out and you lose a match, what I have seen so many 
some of the people that they bring in to warrior wrestling uh my good friend the beast man comes to mind where the crowd was just kind of eh. and then he took on rhino a show later and lost and they were cheering the heck out of him on the way out uh dan the dad's another one just comes in and has won that crowd over warhorse uh so that's a really good crowd i'd love to see you in there so hopefully thank you hopefully they reach out so my final question for you is the most important i feel like it's i feel like i probably could have asked so many more actually i'll ask you two questions but one question okay. is going to be my cop-out journalism question can you give me i'm always looking for people to cut it i i refuse to be the kind of guy that will ask you a question just trying to get that tmz soundbite so that i could be on twitter tomorrow going hey Shaw Guerrero said this scathing yeah. thing, but I always, I also would like to get more people to watch the show. So do you got a cool story at all that you could tell me that maybe you haven't told anybody? Yeah. This is putting you on the spot. Something funny, a road story. Uh, I, have, I have a story about my dad. Uh, okay. And it's kind of, I, I, I will be fully transparent. This is like my party story. Like this is like the one story I tell, like I don't have, I'm not a funny person. I have funny shit happen to me and I just, I'm just a witness or a victim. Of it. <laughs> um, so if you want to hear about my father's grade A parenting, I'm going to let you know. So I'm in middle school and I've never, I was at a private Christian school growing up and we were not allowed to dance or we didn't have school dances. It was very strict, very super religious. Um, so it was my first time at a public middle school. It was my first dance and I had a best friend and I was like, Hey, I don't know how to dance at the school dance. And so she taught me how to grind. I think we all know what that is. I would like to think that everyone has either experienced it or tried it anyway, um, or seen it in a movie. But so she taught me how to grind and I did so great at the school dance. I grinded up and down and left and right. And I, I was like, wow, that was fun, okay. Um, the next day at dance practice, my father decided to come and surprise me and watch me at step practice, which was really cute, the parents did that. Apparently there was a chaperone that was at the dance the night before and decided to tell my father what a great grinder <laughs> I was. After step practice, um, I was like, dad, like so excited to see him. He like deadpans me. He deadpans me. He's like, get in the car. I was like, oh, like, like when he, like, he, we've all seen my dad mad. We've seen the, the Ray, um, the Ray Eddie angle. We, we know what he looks like. And he gave me that look and, um, we're in the car. It's silence. My sister is sitting across from me. She's like, you're gonna get it. And I'm like, oh, I'm terrified because I'm the good kid. I never get in trouble. We get home. My father sits down in a chair and he's like, Shaw Marie, what's grinding? And like, he legit acted like he didn't know. And he was like, show me. Show me what grinding is. And I was like, what? And I was like, it's just a dance move. And he was like, no, 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 no. You have to show me. And then he like, he like pats his leg. He's like, show me. And I was like, I'm crying. I'm ugly crying. You know, where you're like, <laughs> like your lip, your bottom lip, like keeps retreating in the back of your mouth. And um, <laughs> I'm crying. My mom is in the corner, horrified, watching this pan out. Like she hasn't said anything. I'm like, dad, I can't. I can't grind on you. <laughs> I don't think he was going to let me, uh, obviously, but like, he was like, okay, he sits my mother down and he's like, show me how to grind. And so I'm grinding on my mother, like, still crying profusely. And I shit you not, I didn't grind again until I was a senior in college. <laughs> so it worked. I did not grind again for years because I was so traumatized by it. So traumatized. Uh, but it did the job. I never did it again. That's until hilarious. I was like, until That's I was like of drinking age. <laughs> and even right. I, we, we can see his face. <laughs> it was awful. It was the worst experience 
ever. But like, it, it's really funny now because I just, I'm crying profusely grinding on my mom. <laughs> anyway, but that's my fun. That's dad the story. story. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. So we'll wrap up with this. The most important. We want to know where we can, uh, have you wrestled in the UK actually? That's my, my no, little No, and I really, really want to. Okay. We'll, we will, wrestling travel, we will get you over to the UK once the, the board is yes. open. We'll, we'll get you something hooked up. But where can we, as fans, where can the fans locate? We You have Twitch. Can you plug so all of your stuff? We'll try to get I them. I will. Awesome. Twit, oh, sorry. Twitch and Instagram. It's at Shaw Guerrero. So you can find me there. You can also, for everyone that is 18 and up, find me on Patreon. Uh... My Twitter is Guerrero underscore Shawl. And uh, legit, guys, I'm the most active on Twitch. I'm obviously interacting with you in real time. I'm talking about all my stuff and playing Animal Crossing, of course. Um, but also on Instagram, I'm constantly posting where I'm going to be, where you can get tickets, addresses of where I'm going to be wrestling. And I have so many more promotions that haven't even been announced that I'm going to be at. So stay tuned, you guys. Fantastic. And as far as TikTok, we know you're just a voyeur on TikTok. So I am. We'll, but look up the Fleetwood Mac stuff so you're, will. So you're up to date. And then uh, what's Wrestling with Whiskey? I've got to ask because I didn't change oh. your, your screen name. So Wrestling with Whiskey is my husband's uh, whiskey page. He's like, he is a grown up. He is an adult, man. Like he, I don't know. He like tastes the I don't, the, there's, 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 there's not a bouquet in whiskey. I don't know. But like, he, he's like an expert taster. He's actually in a huge competition for Bardstown bourbon, uh, wow. this month. Yeah. He's like, he knows his stuff and it, you know what? And if you don't know anything, his page kind of is very much about learning. It's very chill. It's really fun. So definitely check out wrestling with whiskey and, oh yeah. Right there. <laughs> Does it have a does it have a lovely bouquet like she said? He says, does oh, he can't hear, bouquet? right? No, he's like, does it have a lovely bouquet? That's not a word. I know. That's not I a thing. You said it. You think in wine? It, I think it's a bouquet. I don't. Now you like, just, Shaw, you just made me sound like the idiot. The nose, the palate, and the finish. The nose, the palate, the and the finish. I don't know. It noses one way, it tastes one way, and then it finishes another. I drink White Claw, so we're clearly oh on different spectrums <laughs> of, of drinking. I don't tell anybody that when they ask. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I drink Jameson, but I shoot it. I, I don't drink it. I shoot it. Okay. <laughs> and I love you in spite of it. I know. Oh, All righty. You yeah, heard me talking about him. No, I'm glad. I was going to say, we got to get him on the show one of these days when he's not Absolutely. busy. So Awesome. <laughs> so, All right. And I remember I told you what a terrible closing I have. All I'm I have ready is, for it. It's like the Chris Farley show on Saturday Night Live. I'm like, thank you, Shaw Guerrero, for joining us. And we look forward to catching you November 13th, Tampa, hey. Florida, Generation Champion GCW, the Diamond Cup. Are they streaming that at all? We'll have to pay attention yes. and find out. They are. Title Match Network. Title Match Network. You heard it here first. All right. Hey. We hopefully, if we don't talk to you before the holidays, happy holidays. Um, and we look forward to catching up with you again soon thank you so much thank you stay well all right you too thank you and promoters hit that gmail booking.shawguerrero at gmail yeah